I'm Pawan Sinha. I'm a professor of vision and computational neuroscience in the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences here at MIT. My lab uh, focuses on understanding how the brain makes sense of the visual world. The information that the eyes provide the brain is a very complex uh, set of information. And it's a great computational challenge, not just for the brain, but for any system to try to make sense of that complex visual array. And that's what my lab uh, is focusing on. How does the brain begin to see the world as meaningful objects? The specific problem in vision that my lab is most interested in is object recognition. So how is it that we are able to recognize objects in the world despite variations in their appearance? So the first time I see a person, somehow my brain is encoding information about that object so that on subsequent occasions, when I see the same person, even though I might be seeing him or her in a very different circumstance, different lighting from a different distance, somehow my brain is able to recognize that person despite those variations. And we'd like to understand how the brain encodes objects, how it, it accomplishes its amazing abilities for recognition. The kinds of insights we might derive from looking at the brain in trying to understand this very general problem of object recognition uh, has to do with how we encode images. So just to take a concrete example, let's say we wanted to recognize uh, a face across many different lighting conditions. Somehow that doesn't bother the brain. And it's a mystery, or it has been a mystery, as to how the brain is achieving what's referred to as invariance across those different conditions. And if we understood this, there would be many applications for machine vision systems to have the same kind of robustness. So for a long time, the belief in machine vision was that we must be extracting some very fine details in images, like fine edges uh, in the face images, in order to achieve the kind of robustness that the brain is achieving. But for many, many years, a few decades, that idea did not lead to any success. So many machine vision systems have been built uh, that have used those kinds of detailed features, and somehow they always were very brittle. So I started looking at what kinds of features might the brain be using in, in encoding, in representing uh, visual images. To my surprise, I found that instead of these very detailed features, the brain seemed to be chock full of some very coarse, very crude uh, features, like is the brightness of two very large regions, is that the same or different? Um, and even that difference, the brain seems to be representing very crudely, is one region brighter than the other, without really caring about how much brighter it is. So it seems that the brain is throwing away a lot of information. But when we take that insight from studies of brain function, and we create a machine vision system out of it, quite to our surprise, it turned out that the machine vision system gained added robustness. It seemed to perform really well. It was able to generalize across conditions that were giving a lot of trouble to previous approaches. So the, the takeaway uh, message from that, uh, from that experience for me was that we ought to be looking for simple answers to seemingly complex questions. And that's uh, maybe not in every occasion, but on at least some occasions, the brain seems to, to subscribe to this idea that some fairly sophisticated looking abilities might have their roots in some fairly simple strategies. Um, and I think a study of brain function gives us clues about what those simple strategies might be.